Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, today we are actually at my house where I am going to teach you guys how to customize the handles for your SE JG3. This would probably work on any other factory SE handles as well. Um, the thing about the JG3, <clears throat> as you know, if you've watched my channel, I'm a huge fan of handles from the Knife Connection. In fact, in a joint collaboration, we just came out with the uh, Woodland Camo Canvas My Carter, or I should say the Knife Connection came out with them, but uh, it was a collaboration between them and Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, as far as I know, nobody, including the Knife Connection at present, makes any aftermarket handles for the SEJG3, which is just about my absolute favorite um, smaller knife to carry as a backup knife or to carry in small survival kits. It's just, it's so light and it does so much. And I did a review on this, some it was last year, uh, up in the mountains, reviewed it and field tested it. So if you haven't watched that video, be sure and go back and watch that. But so here is a JG3 with the factory handles. Um, untouched, unchanged. Here is a set that I just a couple days ago dyed black. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the whole process of dyeing a set of SE handles. So I've got some RIT dye here and I've chose dark brown. We're going to try to do this one in dark brown and I'm going to take you guys through the whole entire process. So let me pause you for one second while I gather up all my goodies. Okay, first thing you'll need is a Torx 15 driver to get the uh, screws out of a factory SE. I prefer to have two of them. I've had some so tight that I had to do both sides at the same time or hold one side so I could turn the other. So the first thing we need is a Torx 15. Then we're going to need uh, just RIT dye, whatever color you choose. I, we're, again, we're going to try dark brown today and see how that turns out. And some type of a can or something to soak the handles in. Let me pause real quick right here and explain. There's three different methods that I've used to dye these handles. One, this is probably the most commonly seen is to just take the handles off, set them in boiling water that has got the dye poured into it for about a half hour, take them out. I have found that by itself to be the least effective method. The coloring doesn't absorb as deep into the canvas micarta and usually leaves some lighter patches on the handles that just didn't you know, soak up the coloring as well. More effective method, method number two, that I've used is to just take your coloring, pour it right on a rag, and rub it into the handles. And I have found that, two coats of that, and then wash it off with cold water to uh, absorb deeper into the canvas micarta and to do a better job of coloring. So I tried, okay, let's combine the two, and I have found that to be most effective. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put on uh, two coats, rubbing it in, and then I'm going to drop the handles in the boiling water um, with the food coloring in it, or not food coloring, but the dye in it, sorry, for a half an hour and let it soak. And I find that gives it the deepest absorption into the material as well as the best coloring. So step one, we got to get these handles off. Be careful when you do this that you don't lose anything or you don't end up cutting yourself. Let's see if one side will do it. Yep, got my finger here to see if the other side's going to turn, and it's not. So there's my screw on the one side and the other. And I'm going to take those two and I'm going to set them off over here completely out of the way where I don't lose them. I'll get the back ones now. That back one was spinning a little bit. I had to push on it with my finger to get it to quit. 
Okay. There we go. And the other two for the back end. Put them over here out of the way. And you might check whatever handles you're doing to see if everything's the same length and uh, set them aside appropriately. If they're not, both those are the same. Here's your JG3 full tang knife without the handles. And here are the handles. So the first thing I'm going to do, just got an old rag here. Give this a good shake. And, oh yeah, one other thing. You want to get some rubber gloves, surgical gloves or something. Let me pause. This just keeps everything from being a mess on your hands that you got to try to clean up later. So I just got a pair of surgical gloves. That allows me to handle everything and I don't have to use multi-tools or pliers or anything to move everything or anything around or get stuff all over my hands. So again, we'll shake up the dye really good. Rit dye, dark brown. I've never done dark brown before. I've done blue and green and uh, like a bright orange um, for different knife handles and black of course so this is my very first run at dark brown so just want to put some on your rag and start massaging it in i'll try to turn it so you guys can see what's going on here that so I'm just gonna rub I'm gonna make sure I get all the way around I'm not gonna worry about doing the inside the side that's gonna be next to the knife try to get some press down into the holes a little bit and from time to time you'll just have to get another shot as your dab that you got on your rag gets absorbed And almost got this one for the first coat. Okay, so you guys can see that. I got a little light spot right here. So coat number one is on there, and I'm going to just set this off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing with the second one. Again, as I said, I've used, I've experimented on all three methods, and I find that rubbing this in first, two coats, let it dry, then put a second one on, and then putting it in the boiling water with the dye seems to saturate the deepest into the canvas micarta and then give the best overall coloring in the end. And uh, if you've got a different method that works for you, that's good. I really do, if you haven't tried this, recommend giving this method a shot at least because it does work well okay how did we do so we have one coat on each of the handles and what i'm going to do is yeah turn you that way a little bit towards the light i'm going to let both of these dry i'm going to pause you guys i'm going to take this glove off to do that 
and come back and put a second coat on. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get some water boiling so I can put this uh, boiling water in this can. Okay, sorry guys. This is kind of a makeshift camera holder I got going on here. All right. So my first coat is soaked in. I'm gonna put one more coat on. Make sure whatever area you decide to work in, you've got it covered with an old towel or something like I do here. Because if this stuff ends up on something good, you may never get it out. So, let's see if that's nice and even. I don't want to miss anything and have to come back and redo it later. I believe, take a look at that. That's a nice, looks like it's going to be a nice rich brown. Now when we're all done, it probably won't be that dark, but that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Okay, we'll let that one dry. Get it on the other one. I got water on the stove right now that should be coming to a boil. Any second. Okay. Just make sure I got all the edges really good. And I will go, I will pause you guys. I will get some boiling water and fill this can full enough to uh, set the handles in here and have them be completely covered. And I'll pour in some of this dye. Um, I don't know exactly how much. I probably pour in a third, I would guess. I would say there's probably enough for three sets of handles here. And then the long part, we'll have to let it soak for, I usually let it soak for 30 minutes. So we'll just have to put you guys on pause a couple times while it soaks. So for now, I'm gonna cover that up. All right, I will be back with boiling water. Okay, I got boiling water in here. And by the way, don't grab the can when it's got boiling water in it. Uh, I wrapped it up in a towel to carry it over here. So, getting gloved up again. And that again is just to protect my hands. And I'm gonna pour about a third of that dye in there. And I need to give it a little stir. Um, let me pause you one more time. Naturally, it won't pause with this on. <laughs> okay, last thing I forgot was something to stir with. So, I just want to stir that in there really good. Make sure that it's nice and even. And again, this will come out all brown, so make sure it's something that you don't want permanently stained. And... All right, now I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna set them down in there. Whew, that's hot. <laughs> okay, so this is where we're at in the process. And again, I know I've seen a lot of people, they do nothing but this final stage, but um, my own experience is, as if I rub in a couple coats, of the dye to start with. It takes on a color that penetrates into the material deeper and just looks overall better. In fact, when I compare just boiling to just rubbing, and I've done both um, side by side, the rubbing looks better. So the two combine 
um, seems to be the best. Now we're just on hold. So normally I wait about a half an hour to do this. I'm going to have to pause you guys and unpause you guys a time or two because my phone will that I'm using to record will shut off. It won't hold a pause for that length of time. So let me pause you guys, come back, pause you one more time, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Forgot, can't pause you through gloves. <laughs> Okay, this is our first unpausing. Um, they're just soaking away. Can's still too hot to touch, uh, but it stopped steaming, so it is cooling. Again, ideally, and I don't know if it needs that much time or not. Ideally, I like to let the can sit uh, um, about 30 minutes. Just let the handle soak. But uh, I'm going to pause you. We're going to let it do it for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to move you guys into the kitchen sink. We're going to pull these out and uh, rinse them off with cold water, wait for them to dry and put them back on our JG3 and see how she turns out. Okay guys, now I don't recommend just pouring this stuff down your sink, at least I don't like to where I live at out in the country. Um, so I'm pouring this into another container that I'm gonna get rid of later, at least some of the liquid. I got rid of some of the liquid so I can just grab these out. Just trying to get everything where you can see. Okay, and I'm gonna just rinse this in cold water. That's gonna get rid of all of the uh, excess coloring that's just laying on top that would end up rubbing off on your hands and knife sheath and everything else, clothing. I'm just gonna give that a nice rinse. I'm gonna set that over here on a paper towel. Get this out of the way for now. And the other one, same thing. Just rinsing off all that excess. Okay. And then I'm going to just pat it dry with paper towels. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to rub on it or anything. I'm just going to pat it really good. So I got that. So you can see right there, just a little bit more came off around the edges. So just going to pat that dry. Same with the other one. Okay. You're going to see that a lot better. We're going to go back in the other room where there's a lot better lighting than what, what's in here. But I need to let these dry. So we got to pause again while they dry. Are you ready to see the finished project? Wow, they turned out beautiful. Look at that. Look at that nice rich brown. So it's still a little damp. It hasn't all the way dry. There's still little wet spots but it's dry enough for us to work with. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. So much nicer looking than, in my opinion, than what comes on them. And also what comes on them just absorbs every dirt and stain and thing, you know, which is fine, but I just prefer something like this. All right, so let's put this back together see what it's gonna look like absolutely beautiful in my opinion get everything lined up here oh 
I'm gonna just do one side. Just snug, I mean, not even snug, just basically what I would call finger tight. And then do the same with the back. And when I'm all done, I'm gonna let this dry some more because I can feel on my fingers a couple spots that I just didn't quite let dry. I was anxious to get back and show you guys. Okay, now I'm gonna snug this down and I'm gonna put my finger here and if it starts to spin before I get it as snug as I want, I'll grab my other Torx wrench and hold it on both sides. So, nice and snug there. Nice and snug there. Flip it over. There we go. You don't want to over tighten, but that is perfect. All right. My opinion, the new and improved SCJG3. Doesn't that look nice? We're right down in its factory sheath. Yeah, that looks good. Well, that's a tight fit. Oh, that looks great. Boy. I really like that. I like that a lot. So there it is, guys. I took you through the whole process. Um, I've done this on the Micarta handles for um, quite a few Beckers. I can tell you the black turned out the best on the Becker. It actually, on the Becker Micarta handles, came out as a really dark, dark brown. The black did. Um, I've done uh, mostly, mostly a wide variety of the Micarta on the Becker. And then my other little JG3, which is done in black. So here's your black. Well, and your brown side by side. And in that picture, they look a light, but they're not. The, the brown, actually, if you're in the light, yeah, you can see the difference there. That brown is just gorgeous. I wish I would have done my other one in brown now after looking at that. I might try one of these uh, if I end up getting another JG3. Because, listen, Ochiko Bushcraft official policy, you can never have too many knives. <laughs> uh, if I end up getting another one sometime, I think I'll try it in a dark green. But uh, there it is, guys. There it is. And thanks again for watching this channel. And for those who've donated, uh, thank you so very, very much. You're the ones helping make it possible for me to... Um, buy some of these things to review to you know do what I did today buying the materials and things so and th so that I can do this so I can travel and uh, make more videos thank you for your support thank you for subscribing if you've got a JG3 or just any other essay and you try this out uh, send me a picture I would love to see your own work take care everyone Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft